This week we're working on a series of videos, uh, basically uh, some superimposing of stuff, uh, mainly uh, fire in, in these tutorials. Um, and I'm showing you how to do it in different programs like Caden Live and Blender, and there's a few different ways to do it in Blender. Uh, also, depending on whether you have stock footage or you're creating the fire in Blender. Uh, techniques are similar, but can also be different. Uh, today we're going to be looking at using the compositor to simply add in uh, fire from some stock footage uh, with a black background. So let's go get started. We're using Blender 2.60 in this uh, case. And what I'm going to do is uh, we're just going to hit Control and the left arrow, and that brings you to the compositor. Or you can click up here and go down to compositing. We're going to turn on Use Nodes, Backdrop, Auto Render. Also, uh, my background video is going to be a full 1080p, so let's change this preset to HDTV uh, 1080p and turn the frames to 30 frames a second, because that's what it was recorded at. Okay, next we're going to delete this box right here. This is uh, from our 3D scene. We're not using anything from the 3D scene. We're working completely in the compositor, so select that and hit Delete. Then hit Shift-A, and we're going to import an image, open, going to go to where we have our videos and I have one called Fire AVI. We'll open that and uh, we're also going to hit Shift A here and add an output which is a viewer which is what's going to show up in the background here. So I can click this here and you can see it's very large right now because we did the higher resolution. If you just hit V a couple of times, at least on Linux that might be a little bit different in Windows. I know some of the shortcut keys are different. Uh, so there we go. We have this fire and we want to remove this bl black background and put that video of a fire over another video. So first things first, we're going to say auto refresh cycle and then we need to know how many frames in, in this video we want to use. And in this case we're going to use the entire video because it's only like, uh, I don't know, 20 seconds long. So how do we find out how many frames there are? It'd be nice if there's a little button here that says, you know, full video or something like that. Well, there is in Blender, just not right there. If we click on our texture panel here and we can change this to uh, image or movie and we don't have to say open because we've already imported it we just click here and choose that AVI and right here there's a match movie length we'll click that and you can see there's 304 frames in this video so we can change this to 304 so we have our fire video we can uh, use our arrow keys to scroll through that video left and right arrows uh, and now we're gonna hit shift A and we're gonna say another input of an image we're going to open, go and find my firewood video, which is me chopping up some wood. We're going to say cycle, auto refresh, and once again we can come over here and now choose that firewood video and say match movie length. You can see it's 308 frames, but really we don't want to go past, in this case, the video we're working on. And we'll say 304 just to match it to this one, but I just wanted to show you how you can look that up. Because in some cases you may want the bottom layer to begin. If you want the uh, bottom layer to start after, or before or after, you can also adjust the start frame. So now that we have that set, we can minimize both of these. And we're going to hit Shift A and go down to Color, Mix. And we're going to connect uh, the fire into the top image there and our background image there. And uh, Right now we have mix, which uh, isn't right. We want it to be screen. There we go. So now we have our screen and we have our fire going. And once again, we can use our left and right arrows. It takes a little bit longer for it to update because it's got to generate the uh, transparent layer. Or I don't know if that's the wording right, but you know what I mean. But let's say we don't want the fire there. Let's say we want the fire over here. Well, all we have to do is add in another uh, little node here. We'll hit Shift A and we'll go to Distort and Translate. We're going to take our top layer of fire, we'll connect the output of that to the input image and then the output image to where we had it connected to the screen here. If you drag, as you saw, the uh, box over that line that we had, it should auto connect. And at this point we can start changing the X and you see the higher the number is, the more it's going to go to the right. So uh, I'm going to put this up to 250. It's rather high. Um, you know that number is going to vary depending on the resolution of your video. So this is a pretty high resolution video. So I know we're gonna have to use big numbers to move it big time. There you go. 350 looks good. Then I'm gonna want to move it 
uh, up on the ac ac or y axis. So we'll try, we'll start off at 100 with this. It's a little too high. Let's try 50. That looks great to me. That's pretty much where I want this fire. So it's not as easy as some video editors where you can drag it where you want it, although I'm going to show you in another video how you can do that in Blender uh, using the 3D view. So that's pretty much it. Now I do want to show you, I mentioned it earlier, but I didn't show you. If we change right now, first off, don't forget to connect the output to the composite window here because that's what's going to render. So now we can hit F12 and you can see our rendered image down here. If we were to use a lower resolution for the image, like let's say, uh, yeah, just a little NTSC, you can see that it actually crops the video. So you're going to want to either use the same dimensions as your background video, or you can actually change the size of the, the background video, but for best quality, you should probably keep it the same. So I know my videos. 1080p. If yours is 720, set it to 720. If it's lower, set it lower. And once again, changing that preset changed our frame rate. Let's make sure we do 30 uh, because that's what I recorded at. So at this point, I can go here and I can say, we'll say 300 frames we want to render out. I'm going to make it, uh, I like using XFID. Um, obviously, you can uh, adjust the quality settings here. 600 is a little low. It looks fine for most uses, but if you're going to be importing this and editing it more later on, you're going to want to use the highest quality, which in that case, you may not even want to be using XFID. But whatever video format you like, and um, I'll just call this Firewood3.avi. Uh, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we can, uh, am I forgetting anything? I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't think so. Click animate. There we go. It's going to start rendering out that video frame by frame. It's not the quickest. Two frames a second. We're doing, uh, what did I say, 300 frames. So we're looking at 600 seconds. Uh, so that would be 10 minutes for a 20 second video. So this is not the best case scenario. Other programs may do it faster. Uh, and there's actually probably things we can adjust in the rendering out because uh, I don't know if it's even doing any type of 3D rendering in the background here. Like if we were to uncheck this and change stuff as far as rendering, even though we're not rendering 3D stuff, maybe that affects it. I'm sure there's way to, to like I said, to speed it up. But that's the basic uh, basis. Basics? Basics, yes. On, on doing the screening uh, with the fire when you have stock footage in blender using the compositor only uh, and there's other ways to do this um, and other ways if you want like in this case our fire is staying in one spot let's say you had a fireball that's moving around or some other object that's moving around I'm gonna show you another technique that I've come up with that using the the 3d view to do that yeah Anyway, keep on watching. Check out, there should be an annotation, hopefully I remember, for this playlist for all these videos on different ways of doing the same thing with different programs or the same program, depending on your situation. So I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. I hope you have a great day, and here's a look at this final render. Oh, you know, before I go... Uh, I do want to mention that using the compositor like this, you're not going to have any audio output on this video. You can add the audio back in using the sequencer or another video editor, but just using a compositor like this, there's not going to be any audio. Um, so just keep that in mind. Thank you for watching. Once again, have a great day, and here's that final render.